Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit UMGC.edu. Certified to operate by CHEV. Hey, Ola, it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on Radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. Kicks. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. And away we go! Welcome to Season 16, Episode number 3,495. <laughs> Along with Steve the Throw Hill, the Ted Smith, <laughs> and Mike Hawk. Montgomery! Thank you, our men's room. On tap today, it is a random question question. Your guess is as good as mine. Categories, America's hottest cities, and luxury cars. We will play profile this. Plus headlines, the men's room shot of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorites, TV time with Tim. The clock, drink it to draw. All right, here we go. A couple hikes to the top of a huge peak, decides to have sex, and forgets about their 24-hour webcam. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Minister of Quebec announced music will be played in all government buildings if Bieber is your jam. Man takes e-scooter on interstate alongside cars going 70 miles per hour. Lazy guy throws sofa out of apartment window, nearly joining woman in her higher power. And a man pulls out a gun in Starbucks, demanding more cream cheese. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. All the bitches, good day to you and yours. All right, ever take a sip of what you thought was water, but then it turns out to be Sprite or vodka or some other clear liquid? I mean, man, we've all been there. But now imagine you go to take a sip of water, but instead of water, it's battery acid. It happened to a guy in India. And it's not that he had random battery acid laying around. It's that the shop owner who sold him the battery acid thought he was selling him mineral water. Because for reasons we can't explain, he stores his battery acid in mineral water bottles. Now, obviously, that's dangerous, but the guy did survive. But you know what else is dangerous to consume? You might want to sit down for this. Raccoon poop. Now, you probably already know that, but a one-year-old child in Canada did not know that. And it turns out the real danger of eating raccoon poop is the high level of ringworm eggs in it. Who knew? Now, the good news is that the raccoon turd eating kid, he did survive. The bad news is, well, the kid ate raccoon poop. I mean, if an animal is going to put you in danger... Deep down, you kind of hope it's the old-fashioned way, you know, just a straight-up attack. A three-year-old kid in England, he was at a zoo with his parents. About an hour after they got there, a peacock charged him and attacked his face. Now, the zoo was quick to point out, hey, first of all, we are very proud of our free-range peacocks. And furthermore, the birds aren't usually aggressive. Sure, a different peacock at the same zoo attacked a six-year-old girl back in 2008 and slashed her face. But usually, the peacocks are pretty chill. Assuming you're not a child and don't have a face on the front of your head. Otherwise, apparently, they get provoked if you look like a human. But these are just some of the stories we saw. Stories that left us with many questions. 
Questions we'd like to ask you in the form of our random question question, and this is how it works. You call us, we'll ask you a question that completes random. And after you share your story, we will share with you the news story that inspired said question. Be part of the big show on the random question question. Call 206-421-ROCK. Like the Men's Room on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live. And send those emails to the men's room at KISW.com. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit UMGC.edu. Certified to operate by CHEV. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Home oh, and and away we go. Welcome to Season 16, Episode number 3,495. What a large and in charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeat. That is a fact. Once again, the exciting return of your guests is as good as mine. And as we sit here at about 84 degrees downtown, uh, today we get the uh, hottest cities in America. Hottest major cities in America. All right. Okay. Sure, there are some small towns along the border of uh, Mexico or whatever that get hotter. But as far as population is concerned and uh, where those big cities are, these are the 10 hottest places you can live in the United States. Uh, and believe it or not, we are in one of the cooler spots right now. Yeah, right now, for sure. I mean, you have no idea. Utah was in uh, 115 degrees over mm. the weekend. Palm Springs, 120. God. Phoenix, Arizona was 118 degrees. I mean, you look at some of the places on the West Coast, and it's a, it's a scorcher out there. And Seattle's going to be a hot all week. So we've got the uh, hottest cities in America. And for you, the top 10 best luxury car brands. If any of us had any of these cars... We would be happy to know that we were <laughs> yeah. wealthy enough to afford some of the uh, 10 most uh, best luxury car bands, uh, brands that there are out there uh, that you could buy. And today is the day that we do our random question. Question 206 421 Rob. Random, random. Hello, Michael. Random, Welcome to the men's room. Random, 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 I'll see you at Action Park, boys. Oh, yeah. Random, <laughs> Seriously, yeah, after hearing all the crazy stuff that went down there, I'm amazed they didn't get shut down sooner than 96. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm, trying, I'm still looking forward to watching that documentary. I didn't get a chance to watch it over the weekend, but that's uh, that's going to be something that I uh, that I search out. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. What do I got for you? Okay. How about this one? What is the grossest food that your family made growing up that you thought was normal or pretty decent? What was the meal you hated coming home to? Uh... Well, thrill you'll like this answer. Anything that involves vegetables heavily. Yeah, I agree with that. But sometimes my mother would cake. One thing she used to make, and for the life of me, I cannot explain how this became a thing or why she ever thought I would eat it, but it was tomato pie, all right? But picture just a pie crust on the bottom, basically sliced up tomatoes in the middle along with kind of, a, not like tomato paste. It was kind of like a juicy syrup. Was it like, was it like a deep dish pizza when it was baked? Yeah, but then you cover the top and it's nothing but tomatoes. I'm sure there were some herbs in there or something. But, like, to me, as a child, she put this thing on my plate. Like, I'm not eating this. And it was always the same conversation, right? You can't leave the table until you eat the food. And I realize it is strategic because I had no problem not eating. I would just go to bed hungry. Doesn't look bad. Uh, it's more like but there's this. Two Mike pulled up a picture. So it looked like that one, right? Okay. Not that with All cheese right. and stuff, man. I mean. Right, because, like, Dino's. Their pizza is considered tomato pie, but that's a style of pizza as opposed to like... This was yeah. not that. Just <laughs> mark my words, man. This was not that. My mom, uh, as far as vegetables were concerned, I don't think she liked vegetables as much either, but... And I don't know if it was the era at the time, but she would always do, if it was cauliflower or broccoli, it would be baked in a casserole dish with, you know, the same kind of basic cheese that you were talking about the other day that starts from a roux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it always had cheese sauce on it. So it wasn't like yeah. I like cauliflower that much or broccoli that much, but it was always just smothered in cheese. I think the worst thing was uh, there is something to me that I can taste in a tuna casserole, especially when you're using canned tuna. For some reason, when you... W- to when me, you when you heat, heat it up, it up yeah. you can really taste the metallicness in the in the tuna. And so she would make this tuna casserole, and it'd have peas in it. 
I'm sure some kind of can of like cream of mushrooms. It was like the cornflake crust or something. Right. Yeah. It was just, I mean, that those nights were the worst nights. If it, when did that end, right? Because you're right, growing up, obviously in the 70s, probably the 60s and 50s as well, but the 70s, casseroles were, I mean, like twice a week, you could count on some kind of casserole. And it didn't matter what word preceded it. You call it any kind of casserole. Mm-hmm. It was going to suck. It was terrible. And you're right. There were peas. There's cornflakes on top. And I'm just like, what? If they would have just made it like a Popeye. Like, just maybe throw some carrots in there, diced uh, potatoes or something like that. I, I, I feel like we used to have, like, tuna casserole almost every Friday. Really? Because my parents Catholic were, like, so like, yeah, they were like, old school Catholics. Like, you weren't supposed to eat meat on Fridays any time of year. Oh, my right. God. In the traditional uh, Catholic uh, dinner on uh, Christmas. Which is what? It, it, was, it, it was all fish. But, I mean, the fish was like squid. So, the, oh, the, right, the Italian household. The grandparents right? so. would spend the entire uh, morning cutting up and, and gutting squid, which is, you know, squid ink. It stinks. It's mm-hmm. basically, it's in a box. Like, if you were to buy bait and that would be squid, it's the same thing you eat. Oh, no. We used to have to clean it out. It's weird. We used to have to clean it out of one of the restaurants I was at. And uh, up until this point, I'd never interacted with squid, but I remember. You know, the body's just kind of that open tube. Mm-hmm. And basically, to clean it out, you stick your finger in there and pull out what's in there. So, one, they have the spine. But the spine looks like, picture half of a popsicle stick and make it completely see-through. So, it looks right. like a piece of plastic, but that's your spine. But often, you would pull out whatever it is that particular squid ate before it was caught. So, you got a lot of fish heads. But the one that threw me off, I pull something out, and this thing is in the palm of my hand. All right? So, I just walk up to the chef, and I said, look... Before I lose my exterior cool, you need to explain to me what is sitting in my hand. Turns out it was a jellyfish. Oh. But after right. they've eaten them and all the tentacles are gone, it looks like someone hocked the biggest loogie and spit it into the tube. You get used to it mm-hmm. after a while, but I don't miss that. And where you would make a soup and you would normally throw in a ham hock, you can't do that on Christmas Eve or whatever. I can't remember the exact date. I think it is Christmas Eve. Uh, but they would make fish head soup. <sighs> now, there was some, like the cheeks weren't bad, you know what I mean, as far as the meat goes, but that's about it. And the, the, the fish head was there to, but just looking down on this pot and seeing this giant fish head. Staring back at you. Right. Eyes and everything. Cataracts. And, right. and, and it didn't really do much to flavor the soup, but uh, it was terrible. The reason that's got to be Italian. It is Italian. Yeah. yeah did you I ever, was like, I grew up Irish Catholic, and we just had like turkey and stuffing. And, right. I'd have much preferred that. Did you ever eat smelt? This guy says, uh, I'm Italian. My dad grew up in an Italian house as well. And every Friday, his mom would make smelt. Smelt. I don't know if I did or not. If you smelt it, you dealt it. Yes. And someone else here argues tuna fish casserole is great. And it's not cornflakes. It's crushed up regular Lay's potato chips. Look, I'm sure that's better. You're still not going to convince me the tuna casserole. Look, it would be better if the tuna didn't come out of a can. But that's not where we were uh, in the wealth. Well, well, Everything we come. ate came out of a can. But would you really use fresh tuna in a tuna casserole? Hell no. Oh, but but yeah. it would get rid of the metallic taste, which, which I hated. <laughs> Uh, the reason we asked, what's the grossest food your family made uh, that you thought was normal? Did a little survey, asked a bunch of people, hey, you grew up as a kid, you didn't know any better. What did you think it was totally normal? Here are some of the better ones. Cold peas, mayonnaise, and sugar mixed together as a side dish at dinner. Ew, man. Someone else said mac and cheese with peas and tuna mixed in with a, with, was the mom's go-to lunch. And now they actually make it for their own kid all the time. Mac and cheese, peas, and tuna. We had that on a few occasions, but I think as a family, we kind of agreed, you know what? Mac and cheese is okay by itself. Someone's parents would put a leftover pot roast in a food processor, blend all that up with Miracle Whip and relish, eat it on bread, and they called it beef o salad. Did you guys ever have ham salad? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Nothing wrong with ham that salad. That was a massive deal, too. Like, my mom had the old school grinder you had to, like, hook up to the table. And it's, I mean, and it's basically the same as that, right? Like, let's take some meat, make it a paste, mix it with mayonnaise, call it a spread. We're all good, right? Yeah. <laughs> Woman's yeah. grandmother used to make applesauce jello. Just uh, red jello and applesauce together. Then she'd mix in uh, red hot candies. Then there's the person who uh, enjoyed peanut butter and bacon on toast topped with gravy. Okay, peanut so, butter and bacon, I could probably manage, no problem. Sure. The gravy, that's a little strange. I mean, look, I love pork roll, but that's a strange thing that we ate all the time. Cold spaghetti with lettuce, chicken croutons, and cheese, all topped with French dressing. It was called President's Salad. And a woman's grandmother yeah. made something called... President of what? Yeah. Damn, if I know soup. The recipe always changed because she only made it when she had to clean out her fridge. And then one said potato chips, chicken soup, and tuna. All stacked up like lasagna. They called it mock chicken. Ah, okay. So now this brings back... I thought this was normal. I assumed everyone did it. Uh, they called it yak. Okay, why okay? So in my mind, I'm like six years old. I assume it's some Chinese dish. I was just stunned at how easy the ingredients were. So what you would do see is boiled spaghetti noodles. That would be your low main base. And then you take soy sauce, mix that with ketchup... 
mix it together, that's the meal. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, everyone in my family ate it all the time. I did not know it was weird. I did not know it was horrible until I asked other people. They're like, I'm sorry, what now? Dude, my buddy, his family has this recipe, and it's it's kind of like a casserole, but the name is awful. It's called glunk. Glunk? Yes. <laughs> Why would you think anyone wants Hey, man, you want to try glunk? I don't know, but it's one of those things. Like, I guess they always had it at holidays or whatever, so sometimes when we're all together, like he'll make it. Like, I'm making the glunk. And I'm is like, it good? You know what is I mean? it called that or just their family? That's what for. That's what they call it. It's glunk. Glunk. But it's like cream of mushroom, like, <laughs> like ground meat or ground turkey, like <laughs> some other stuff. We should come up with a restaurant and just serve good food with the worst possible names. There was that, a thing in Boy Scouts called Gorp. We know it as trail mix now, but they called it Gorp. They called it Gorp? Gorp. Was it like for granola, oats, you know, you, raisins and exactly. something? Exactly. Like uh, sometimes M&M's. But yeah. You think somebody said, dude, call it trail mix. Glunk. I'm going to say G-L-U-N-K, right? That's my guess. Glunk. See if there's a glunk recipe. Glunk. Urban Dictionary. The act of sliding one's eyeglasses down to one nose and <laughs> peering over the top of them questioning. I don't think glunk could be a food. What, what you got, Mike? You oh, here it is, glunk recipe. You guys were right that GORP is actually an anagram. It stands for good old raisins and peanuts. Oh, okay. Uh, glunk. You uh, brown hamburger meat, onion and garlic powder until the meat is no longer pink. Drain, prepare macaroni and cheese, and basically mix it all together. Oh, all right. So it's like a hamburger freaking helper. Right? And, uh, and soup stirring in as well. You got to put a can, uh, can of cream of mushroom. It looks that way, yeah. Yeah. One of those deals. Hmm. Okay. Glunk. Oh, glunk. Now people are checking out. Let's see. Meatballs, slow cooked, and grape jelly and ketchup. Oh, uh, that might not be bad at all. That's it awesome. Might yeah, be I really still bad. use a recipe kind of like that. With grape mm. jelly? Uh, it gives egg, it the, the jelly apricot, gives it the glaze. Okay. Apricot, apricot preserves. preserves all right. Grape jelly and, or apricot preserves and like Heinz sauce. It's like a sweet, it's like a sweetie, tangier uh, yeah. meatball. So someone here says, my dad used to make this minestrone that was filled with every ungodly type of vegetable you could ask for. It was so bad that the best part of the soup was the garbanzo beans. Oh, oh. I like garbanzo beans. No. But that shouldn't be the highlight. If you can't wait to get a bar- garbanzo bean in your mouth, you know the rest of your meal is crap. Says, my dad loved fried fish, mac and cheese, uh, whole stewed tomato on top. Not a good combo. Toasted bread, peanut butter, and a sliced pickle sandwich. Come on, man. God, I have to admit, I'm old enough where I really do like stewed tomatoes. I like stewed I always tomatoes. Have, I've always, that was one of those dishes that looked like crap, and I always liked it. Uh, someone else points out chitlins. Have you ever had chitlins? I don't know if I have or not. It, uh, the people that like them love them. I am not one of those people. And I'm one of those people who don't like grits. A lot of people like cheesy grits. They're just not. I like grits. They're not my thing either. But again, see, just like we, a lot of people say they did not know that cranberry sauce was physically made with cranberries because most of us grew up, you just hear it slide out of the mm-hmm. can, right? Uh, the thing with grits, we always had like the instant grits, and I hated those. I absolutely hated them, so I never wanted grits. I become an adult, went to some place in New Orleans, and they had shrimp and grits, and everyone's like, try it. I'm like, I don't like grits. I like grits. Okay. I, 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 do, I do, like legit I, grits. I grew up eating cream of wheat. That's what I was mm-hmm. going to say. It always reminded me of cream of wheat. But then when I was living in Baltimore, a friend of a friend was dating some dude from Texas. All right. And he's like, I'm going to make you real grits. And it was, they were cheese grits and hot mm-hmm. sauce. Like, yeah. I, I'm pro grits. My dad eats them all the time. He eats them like a couple times a week. In Waffle House, man, you go to Waffle House, people look at you like you're cross-eyed if you don't order grits. Yeah, I mean, your dad, though... That seems like the type of person that enjoys yeah, I mean, grits yeah, yeah, a couple exactly, times a week. Exactly. He's like, grits. <laughs> I mean, it's not the best name in the world. No, but it's just a whole lot of butter. I mean, that's a hell of a way to but start your morning. that's the difference. I don't think we ever added butter at home, man. So it's just water and these dried ass whatever it is. And you're talking about chitlins. The worst I ever saw was hog malls. Yeah, that's what, people that like chitlins tend to also like hog malls. Man, my <laughs> grandmother on my mother's side, if you walked in her kitchen, those kinds of things were always cooking. So you'd walk in the house... I hated the smell, man. Why are you frying us? I'm a, making chitlins. Is that a part of the pig? Yes. Hog moths. Moths, this part. Oh, the cheeks? Yeah. I mean, the they cheeks? say, che- but this includes the bone. It's not. It's just different, man. Oh, I know yeah. what you're saying. Right. It's, okay. And it's in vinegar. Right. No. <laughs> More of the random question. Question on the way. 206-421-ROCK. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. 
Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit UMGC.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. 99.9 KISW. Yay! You're in the men's room. Get in there and be a part of our random question question. 206-421-ROUND. Random, random. Hello, random, Matt. Random, Welcome random, to the men's room. Random, Hola, Petrolos. Hola. Random, Matt, welcome to the program. Random question random, question. Random, random, All right, let's see what we got uh, here for you. All right, let's see. Okay. What would you say is the craziest item of clothing that you have ever owned? Craziest item of clothing. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if this is the craziest, but it just popped into my head. Um, you know, because I'm albino and I get sunburned really easily. I've heard that. <laughs> One time we were uh, at, on vacation at the beach and I had this like it was a hat but it had like this like it looked like i was wearing a turban but it wasn't <laughs> like it, it hung around the back so i like my neck didn't get sunburned and like i looked ridiculous but it did work but it looked like a big safari hat or did it look like something you would clean like uh, chemicals with you know what i mean it, it was just a baseball cap with stuff hanging down from the side oh and, like, yeah same color fabric now let me ask you yeah, matt you can't you, you couldn't go out and spend 15 minutes uh in the sun with the short sleeve shirt on today could you I mean, I'd have to put sunscreen on or just make sure I don't stand in direct sun. What is the SPF on your sunscreen? Because right? everyone has their different thing. But in the case of um, actually being albino, I assume you get whatever the best commercially available crap is. That's the stuff you get, right? Yeah, yeah. And when I was a kid, like the best I could find was 45 SPF. But now they have like 70 and 100. Okay. So I just got the highest I can see. But, but ideally, you would wear maybe what a long sleeve uh, shirt out? Uh, dude, I'm walking around shirtless today. I'm oh, well, well, that's that's sexy. <laughs> I saw uh, a guy the other, uh, the other day, and uh, I was like, "Why are you wearing uh, long sleeves in this weather?" And they were they they were it, the sleeves themselves were just detachable sleeves. All right, like a, like the compression stuff okay. you had, but it was white, and it like started at your bicep and came down, and it was just sleeves. Like he was wearing a t shirt. It was just. So you didn't steal those things from football players. Those yeah, things that they put on their arms. That's exactly yeah, what it was. Players, but you yeah. can, but you can buy them and you know wear them. And I was like, I've never seen anyone just rock those. That's pretty why smart. was he wearing them? Did he say because he was golfing and for five uh, and a half sun. hours in this crap? All right, yeah, and they, and they were white and they can't, and he's like, man, they, they kind of deflect the sun a little bit and keep sure. it cooler. I was like, that's pretty smart. Well, it's like the neck gaiters. I mean, people that fat that fish in the south and stuff have wearing those things for years just mm-hmm. to keep the sun off. Them. And they wear the same kind of hats and mats talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with the flaps I, hanging on the back. I'm thinking about going full on for that look, like long sleeve, long pants. But it, like, like I could be fly fishing at any moment. If okay, Ted, let's just say someone breaks into your house, right? <laughs> all right, and they don't know that you're a festival type guy, and they go into your closet. All right, they, they find where you keep all your <laughs> stuff. Sure. Okay, what what are they gonna what are they gonna find? And I mean, the fur coat's probably the weirdest. I have a couple calf tans. What is a calf tan? So, t- uh, traditional. Like long flowing, I think they've come from Turkey. I know what you're talking you about. Okay. A, you've seen people wear them before, but they're big over in like the Middle East and like Africa and stuff. Now, is this because they're going to be surprised when a short white dude rolls in? Like, <laughs> is, is this practical for the weather? You know, with the sun and the in the sand and everything like that. Is that why you? you well, some of them too are just comfortable. Period. Like I just like to wear them around. Especially they do look hot. comfortable. Okay, there's uh, no doubt about that. Okay, but what I have a real uh, like authentic one that. Yeah, I think it's good for the desert. All right. Oh, Which, you know, is, is an unusual thing to have at a closet in Seattle. If I'm like, who is this guy if I break in, right? I still think the craziest thing I own, though, is that brick shirt. That Yeah, I can't. It's just a T-shirt that has a brick pattern. But it's but every once in a while, there's a gold <laughs> brick. The shirt looks like a brick wall, and there's no rhyme or reason with the gold ones. And I'll never forget, the day I bought it, I was with Jeets. <laughs> and he was like, you're pretty hammered, man. I don't think you should get the brick shirt. I was like, get the brick shirt. <laughs> and now it's legendary. <laughs> reason we asked, so what's the craziest item of clothing you own? We all know Steve-O from Jackass fame. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got a new stunt uh, that he's been working on for the last two years. He has been working on a homemade Sasquatch suit made entirely of pubic hair. Oh, okay. But God. since he cannot produce enough body hair himself, he made a post asking for volunteers. He held somewhat of a pube shaving party last Thursday. The requirements? You had to be uh, a dude over 18. No okay. ladies were allowed. And everyone had to bring their own razor. So Steve-O basically filled up a large plastic bag with hair from armpits, crotches, and even the butt. 
Uh, considering a Bigfoot uh, suit requires lots of hair, uh, maybe he will unfortunately hold another meetup soon. So that's, uh, that's I need more pubes, ma'am. He's got. He's gonna make a, 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 a Sas- Sasquatch suit. Random, random, made random, from human random, pubic hair. Random, I mean, it is not something random, I would do, but I, I admire that. One of a kind. Random, you know, and the truth random, is, now that I've just heard about this, I really can't wait for it to be done. Mm-hmm. I just want to see him in it. <laughs> you know, just to I know. All the different minute. colors blended together. Not everybody has the same sure, hair color. Sure, 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 sure. Hello, Amanda. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, fellas. Hola. Hola. Amanda, welcome to the program. Hey, you guys staying cool or is yeah. your ball sticking to your leg? Or? Yeah, well, we're in an air-conditioned studio, but you'll get, still get a little bit of that. I mean, you can't stop that oh, from happening. That just happens in general. Yeah, you try to very powder. adhesive. You can powder, but it doesn't always help. <laughs> All right, Amanda, let's go with this one. What uh, What did you or someone you know steal from your job? From my job? Yeah. Job you were working at, maybe you oh, swiped something okay. or you know an employee who happened to... Okay, yeah, 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 I have something. I um, worked in a restaurant and uh, when I was a lot younger and um, we would have breakfast every once in a while and make waffles or whatnot and serve it with whipped cream. Well, uh... One of these days, um, I was introduced to the Whip It. Whip It good. Mm-hmm. You know what that is? Yeah. And so uh, one morning before the bosses got there, we had actually went through two cases of the whipped cream containers. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're messing around. And then by the time the bosses got there and we started serving the food, um that, yeah, no carbonation. I don't know what happened. Yeah. They, they said uh, it's just coming out like milk. So we, uh, yeah, we whipped it on about two cases, twenty four each of uh, whip it cans. And damn, did uh, I mean that's one of those things where you just you're, you're kind of in a daze for the rest of the day. I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, like once you do it, it only lasts like three or four seconds, and you're completely back to normal. But those three or four seconds are the funniest times in your whole life. <laughs> okay. but it, it's, it's the greatest lived. four yeah, seconds of my life. Steve, did you ever work yeah. anywhere where it was worth bringing some of the food home to make it home? Like, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, right? sure. Uh, yeah, a lot okay. of places. All right. Okay. Uh, um, but that's problematic because, you know. I mean, you can't bring a blooming onion home if you work at Outback because you don't have a deep fryer and you don't have all Sure, sure, sure. Like, so there's got to yeah. be certain things that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook that up. Yeah, right. well, I, I, I worked in the furniture store, you know, Ikea and... Uh, Brought home a lot of stuff, but I mean, I, I was there for 15 years, so by by that point, I was done with the meatballs and all. Right. The, you know, honestly, exactly man, all the stuff. restaurants I worked at, if I was going to eat food from the restaurant, typically I would just make it myself there. Yeah. Like, I was more apt to steal, oh, God, silverware because you're broken and you needed something for home. Steal the glasses, <laughs> stole the VCR once, but I mean, I don't I don't think I ever actually stole food from any of the restaurants. No, no. I stole a microphone once from a radio station in Hagerstown. That's about as crazy as I get. Why, why'd you steal the microphone? You know, because uh, that woman who uh, was owner of that place uh-huh. was, treated all of her employees like garbage. Oh, okay, I got I you. was cleaning out a back room and uh, got into a drawer that nobody really knew existed. I was digging through cables and all this crap, and at the bottom of it was a AKG microphone, which goes for about $1,000. Those are expensive, and man. I was a little bit too rich for my blood. I realized like, the <laughs> nicest microphone in this entire building is in a drawer that no one knows is there, and they're not using the damn thing. You know what I did uh, from... So uh, I decided I was going to use it. From this very radio station, I did steal your mic flag. Right, so like if you're looking at a press I, conference I, I and people those. hold the mics up, those. yeah, and I took well the thing it was laying loose, so I'm like, oh well, hell yeah, man, I'll take it home. So uh, hair clubs at my house years ago for something, and he sees it and he's like, did you steal that from the station? I said, where else would I steal it from? Right, you think I ordered, <laughs> right. you think I ordered one of these? I ordered one for myself. Yeah. Yeah. What are you like, stupid? Of course I stole it from the station. <laughs> they're like twenty five or fifty <laughs> bucks. They're not cheap. <laughs> Reese asked, what did you steal from your job or someone else? The Touchstone Pistachio Company of California. They reached out to police with an unusual plea. Someone stole our nuts, and a lot of nuts. Uh-oh. And Otto turned up 42,000 pounds of missing pistachios, according to the Sacramento Bee. Now, detectives, they have since arrested a California trucker and explained the alleged plot in a Facebook post. They say the tractor trailer filled with pistachios was moved from one trucking lot to another nearby. From there, the nuts were then being repackaged 
from 2,000-pound sacks into smaller parcels for resale. But they couldn't move a ton of pistachios? No, they had to put them in individual bags like normal people buy them. The nuts were originally moved by the owner and a 34-year-old man affiliated with the company. Alberto Montemayor has been charged on suspicion of of theft and uh, because uh, of the value of the nuts being over $100,000, he is facing some serious Serious jail time. Yeah. They're apparently looking for accomplices, however, because the Sheriff's Department is asking for the public to come forward with tips and to find all these pistachios that are now being sold in retail locations. But how would you know, right? If you went into the grocery store, you're going to buy pistachios, because who doesn't enjoy a pistachio? But I wouldn't know. I wouldn't think, like, man, I, I'm not buying into this. These are counterfeit pistachios. They've been repackaged. How the hell would you know? The I average person. I don't know that you could. Yeah, I couldn't. I have no idea. No, those are the really good ones that come in the different flavors, like salt and pepper, and they got the cayenne ones. They have cayenne pistachios? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They pistachios got, doing a lot of work right now. They do. Uh, I mean, I know they got a big ad campaign going on. Let's get cracking. All that. I did not realize they were offering all these different oh, flavors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chipotle. You damn it. Okay. Random, yeah. random, random. Check random, out some Chipotle random, uh, random, pistachios. Random, Speaking random, of which, random, there's random, no truth that Chipotle random, restaurant random, carries haggis. Random, I'm just throwing it out there. Random, <laughs> random, <laughs> what? Have we asked? We haven't had. Now, what was it? You said you wanted to try haggis, which I do not understand, but you said you did. You Googled Correct. what? Haggis in Seattle or something like Correct. that? Correct. And Chipotle came. I don't know why Chipotle. Like, seems like a stretch for a Mexican grill. But hey, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's on their special menu. I don't know. Hello, Wes. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 Wes, welcome to the program. Random question, question. All right, let's go with this one, Wes. What, uh, what did you eat or drink by accident? What have you eaten or uh, had a drink of by accident? Oh, uh, man. I Okay, so I was in South Korea, and a friend of mine was like, hey, we'll go to this, you know, this fish market, and we'll get some food, and we'll just have lunch, and then we'll go out and party. And so uh, they bring out these. So when you go to a fish market, you buy your fish, and then they direct you to a restaurant. Well, so he's like, hey, just go to the restaurant, get us some beers. I was like, okay. He ordered. He bought the fish from the fish vendor, and they bring it out because it's also uh, sashimi style. Okay. And they had uh, these little wraps, and it wasn't seaweed. It was some other type of leaf with rice. And I'm like, hey, dude, why is that moving? And, and <laughs> I ate it, and it was straight up raw, still moving octopus. Ah, oh, God, man. So, I mean, now look, I, I don't want to go without sympathy, but much like Miles with his blue and red speckled mushroom, you see that the thing's moving. You didn't necessarily get an answer to your question, and you're still like, the hell with it? Well, so it's like one of those... It's like one of those man things, uh, I guess. <laughs> you know, that stupid, e- that stupid ego. Uh, my buddy Rich was with me, and our buddy, who's half Filipino and half Korean... And so he was kind of like our tour guide. He he uh, he's like, just eat it, be a man. And so I looked at Rich and I was like, yeah, yeah, Rich, well, let's eat this. <laughs> and Rich, Rich and I downed it at the same time. And I started gagging and I just forced it down. Rich jumped up from the table and bolted to the bathroom and just puked it all up. Now, did you bite into it at all or just swallow it? I chewed as fast as I could and then I just <laughs> swallowed. I was like, just get it over with, man. And what did it taste like for the most part? Raw octopus. So it it still tastes, I mean, like a normal piece of sushi, but something's wriggling in your throat as it goes down your throat. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, never again. So you're not chewing it. But the good news is at least you know it's fresh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Our yeah, food is so yeah. fresh it is still moving on your plate. Top I, that. It's so I, organic. I would be worried about those worms you were talking about. Just to take a fish and then eat it sashimi style, right? I mean, I don't think that I realize it's sliced a little thinner. But get those worms, yeah. But, but that was but. different than the fish that was bought at the market. So that was just a yeah, part of the yeah. roll and the wrap. You know what I mean? Like the fish would be the thing where I'd be afraid those pinworms would be in there. So let me like get that. the straight. Did you eat raw fish? I do. I just uh, you know go you to feel Japanese. Better stuff. in the states, you know, for whatever. <laughs> we kind of know what our health departments look for. It doesn't mean you're 100 percent safe, but you you feel better because we hear a lot of stories like yours, Wes, where someone and it's always Asia. Right, went to the market. You weren't quite sure what you're eating, and a lot of times have an ill effect. I told you I had a raw clam with my buddy. That was awful. I, do people eat raw clams? I've never even seen that you, on the menu before. This place was. That, I mean, I've, other than the story that you tell me, I've never heard of 
anywhere serving. Certainly nobody eating raw clams, man. That's just, how bad was it? It's one of the worst things I ever put in my mouth. Do you put <laughs> cocktail sauce on it, or do you dip it in butter, or is there? No, it was the same. It was the same setup as like a raw oyster, so it had a. So it was just it was already, or whatever. It was it was pretty open. It had to be because you couldn't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my buddy goes. You guys know Dan, mm -hmm. yeah. DB. Like he goes there. He likes raw. I just, he was eating them, but he's a. Is he the guy that only eats sushi rolls? Uh, you know what? It is. No, wait, so how can he he'll be such eat an a raw goddamn you know, clam? But he eat. gave you grief about eating any sushi that Nigiri. wasn't smoked yeah, salmon yeah. or nigiri. Right? He kept calling it nijiji. <laughs> <laughs> what? I know it made you mad. What do you call? Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I, Nigeri? No. Is that what he was calling? I don't know. Finally, by like the third time, I was like, Dan, that's not how it's pronounced. The thing is, the people that if you could just hear his voice. Him saying it somehow it makes it more entertaining to me. Right. I mean, the look of shock in his eyes when I went, and just ordered me some nigiri, albacore tuna. What? <laughs> like, it's not that exotic, You're the man. You eat raw clams. You eat raw clams. I know. And they're not a seagull. Jesus. <laughs> Reese, asked, what did you eat or drink by accident? We go to Cashmere, and a man who was hospitalized after a shopkeeper mistakenly sold him a bottle of battery acid instead of water. I mean, come on, man. Uh, sources told the India Today that the man was coming back after destroying a poppy cultivation. Oh, there's the fun police at work. And it asked for a bottle of water to a nearby general store at about 11 a.m. in the morning. Well, the shopkeeper mistakenly sold him the bottle containing a liquid similar to water, which was battery acid packed in a waste mineral water bottle. The man drank it. He felt uneasy. And then he had to go to the uh, hospital. Yeah. He was thirsty, asked for the shopkeeper for water, but instead he got battery acid. Uh, he is doing okay. His uh, condition has been changed from uh, stable. Uh, he has since been discharged from the hospital. But either way, that's uh, that's pretty heavy duty. You think that guy was into uh, the poppy thing? Like, yeah, I've heard about mm -hmm. you. <laughs> and then we go to uh, Canada, where a southern Alberta couple who realized their infant had eaten raccoon feces found themselves oh. racing against time to find a rare medication in doctors and pharmacists across the western Canada. They had to mobilize to help find it. This story only gets worse. Mm -hmm. Ashley Hodden learned raccoon scats can be extremely dangerous when she found it in her yard in Alberta and researched how to dispose of it safely. Raccoons can carry a deadly form of roundworm, and the eggs live in the feces. So this extremely rare parasitic Caviar! can occur in uh, humans if they ingest the eggs, which hatch into the larvae, travel through the body, and invade the organs, including the eyes and the brain. And so, when her one-year-old son ate raccoon feces from a flower pot in the garden just over four weeks ago, she knew she was uh, alarmed, to say the least. Symptoms of the infection include brain damage, blindness, and coma, and can also be deadly. They go through the stomach barrier, they infest your body, oh. and essentially eat you from the inside out, according to the boy's father. And if you don't treat them quickly enough, there isn't really a way to reverse the effects because they've literally eaten your tissue. Well, they immediately called the family doctor and the province's Poison and Drug Information Service. Both advised the parents to wait and see if their son, whom they didn't want to name in order to protect his privacy, developed any symptoms of infection. Instead, they wait. the parents sought to have the, the feces tested for roundworm, and their veterinarian confirmed the worst. The sample was infested with so many eggs and larvae that they were unable to count them all. Mm. So after rushing their son to the hospital emergency room, they were uh, prescribed a drug which needs to be taken within three days of exposure. Uh, special authorization, believe it or not, uh, you have to have that to write the prescription, was given by Health Canada. Yeah, I don't think this drug was available in Canada. No, but guess what? He didn't have to pay for it. Uh, this signaled the delays to come. We started calling around to try and track it down. They soon realized it wasn't available commonly at all. Uh, when a drug is not widely available, a compounding pharmacy can prepare personalized medications for uh, medications for patients by mixing the individual ingredients together in the exact strength and doses. So basically, that's when your pharmacist becomes more than a pill counter and they actually become right. a pharmacist. Well, 56 hours after ingesting raccoon feces, the parent's son received his first dose of the drug. And from the hospital doctors to the veterinarian, to a chain of pharmacists, the collaboration between so many people uh, actually uh, worked. And they said that that was incredible that they could get all that done. That is so... I had no idea. I mean, look, you know your kids should not eat poop. I just... You would not think that that's the inherent danger. No. More of the random question. Question on the way. 206-421-ROCK. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. 
Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today.